Yeah. This is a lifestyle, and I'm going to tell you some things you can do today to actually start doing this. Most of them you can do today. Make testing a team priority. That's all about creating a culture of quality ownership of your software. So basically, you need to stop taking that story ticket, writing it, finishing it, and just lobbying over the fence when you're done. This is about moving to the left. It's a DevOps term, which basically means you're taking all those steps that were previously not synchronous, and you're bringing them in earlier in the process to make better software. Get rid of the quality, please. Actually work with your QA instead of just like, oh, they'll catch all my bugs later. That's like not how you're shipping high quality software and it's not taking ownership of the code you write, it's really just expecting other people to clean up your mess. And rather than have quality police, if you have QA, even if you don't have QA, just bring them in earlier in the cycle before you even start writing the code. And that kind of goes to my next point. Just write one end-to-end -end test, just one. You've already done your unit tests, you're good. Maybe you should just write one end-to-end -end test. If you don't have time for that, write a smoke test because that gets you out of your little niche of the requirements you're doing on that story card. You're actually seeing how the user uses it and then you're realizing, oh, this is a terrible UX. Why did I do this? Because you're going to write the end-to-end -end test and you're going to understand what you even wrote. Catch bugs early. So this kind of goes back to the end-to-end -end test. If you're writing these on your local before you even merge it, you're gonna catch bugs early. And when you catch bugs early, the actual cost of those bugs is dramatically lower than same production or embarrassment with a customer. And like, I actually just had an experience last week. I put up a PR for code review for a smoke test that I wrote in Postman, pretty basic smoke test. And my coworker pulled it down just to his local environment. This isn't even merged yet into our master. He just ran on his local, it caught a bug and he was able to fix that bug on his local before he merged it. So like even basic automation goes a long way. You don't have to be super elaborate with these kind of automated tests. Just basic tests that catch bugs early. Talk to people a lot. A lot of you became developers, not solely because you didn't have to talk to people, but it was definitely one <laughs> of the reasons. <laughs> but if you actually want to write software that meets the needs of your customers, you're gonna actually need to talk to people, including your product managers, the people on your business team, and pretty much any time you spend with a customer is time well spent. Because any time you're not playing a game of telephone on requirements is basically you not writing code that won't be used or code that's just gonna get rejected. Deploy every day. This one scares some people. I think it's getting less scary to a lot of people, but deploy every day. Like, if you're deploying every day, you've basically made the steps to get your infrastructure in the place that you can do rapid deployment. You have tests in place that are covering all the happy paths, so you have time to do exploratory testing. You have time to do edge, te uh, edge case testing. So just deploy every day. A good practice is get the whole team involved. Have one person on your team in charge of the deploy every week just have them run it that week so it doesn't become this like boogie monster that you're all scared of. And you know, one of the important steps that you know you're in a good place is if you're not afraid to deploy on a Friday at 5 p.m. If you can do that, Woo. you're pretty solid. I've regretted it only once. <laughs> so yeah. We've all been there. Last one, look at the big picture. The code you're writing is so much more than the tiny story cards you, have, you pick up. That is one sliver of a giant piece of software, generally giant piece of software, that you're writing. And if you don't understand where the requirements for your code fit in to what you're writing, there's gonna be some either missed UX, bugs, et cetera, just, it all is just an elaborate game of telephone at the end of the, game, end of the day. Jira, all that, you know, misinterpretation. If you don't stop and take a look at the big picture, you're not gonna nail it all the time and you're not gonna ship good software fast. Bye.